this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to welcome all of you worshiping here this morning. Just a few announcements before we get started with uh, some statements from our youth, from the new youth gathering. Uh, first of all, there is a church council meeting, which will take place tomorrow afternoon, or late afternoon, evening, at 6, 630. Thank you, Terry. I was thinking, it's not 6, it's 630, right? So at 630 is our church council meeting. Um, and then also, there's one other thing I needed to announce to you, and that is the fact that Seeing that the youth got back from the youth gathering on Wednesday, uh, I get a text from our youth leader saying that she uh, tested for COVID and it was negative. But then she went to the doctor and she tested positive. So that's why she's not here this morning. And also that is the reason why since I've been exposed, I will not be giving you communion. I'll be, I'll be, uh, uh, we'll, do, we'll uh, consecrate the elements, but I'm going to have the elders give you communion this morning so I don't stay too close to you. So just, just let you know what's going on there. Since I did sit by Patricia at the worship service at the youth gathering in Houston. So it's just one of those things. So just let you know that's what's going on this morning. At this time, I'd like to invite forward uh, some of our youth. Uh, Kim, are you going to say something this morning? You're going to pass this morning? Well, let, let me start in the front here, okay? Uh, JC, Jade, uh, Zach, Charlie, I saw you walk in. I don't know where you're at. Come on up. Uh, Lily, Preston, I see you back there. Come on up here. And I asked them to give, you, to give you maybe about two or three sentences of their experience from the youth gathering. So who wants to start? Oh, Charlie, there you go. Go ahead. Um, not going to lie to you. I wasn't very uh, spiritual before this uh, thing. But I've definitely grown from this, seeing how God has brought us all together and seeing his love in action at the event. I had a lot of fun at this year's youth gathering. One thing I'll never forget is the songs, and I had a lot of fun. Uh, the trip, while well, I'll admit, was a little tiring for me. Uh, was was a lot of fun. We did a lot of events uh, and had a lot of gatherings and games. And yeah, I really felt very involved in all of the projects and things that were going on. And if I had to name a favorite part, I'd say it's just how everyone was involved. And you know, it was really good to see, and it helped me gain trust and faith in Jesus. Uh, I can speak for everyone here saying uh, we really enjoyed the experience being able to learn about God and how he loves and teaches us in every parts of our lives. And it was just a really fun experience being able to interact with everyone and enjoy all the games. Um, um, the five days that I spent at the youth gathering was an experience like I've ever had before. Not only did my relationship with God grow and mature, I was also able, able to form lasting friendships with other LCMS youth. And all things wasn't just the theme of the gathering. It was an important lesson that was strengthening me throughout the event, that with God, I can overcome everything. Um, one thing that I really enjoyed was um, in Minute Maid at the mass event where they had kids stand to represent statistics of how sin has hurt the world. I also really like how they did the sessions, how they allowed you to go to whichever ones you had time for and was that you were actually interested in, um, and not just you and your group going to all these different things, and have you actually, what, I don't know the word, <laughs> but actually, oh, be able to relate to the sessions you're going to, because they weren't just strictly about one thing, they had a, a ton of different 
kinds of sessions that you could go to and relate to. I also enjoyed playing volleyball and meeting new people at the LCMS Youth Gathering. Um, I had so much fun at the gathering. I really liked how it was in Houston because we didn't have to like go on a plane. We literally just drove an hour. And um, it was cool how it was at Minute Maid Park because that was the first gathering that was at a baseball park. So they did fun baseball activities that were really cool. And yeah, the George R. Brown was fun. We got to create our own schedule, like JC said, and we had to like be on our own, so we were like more independent. But yeah, I really liked it, it was fun. Thank you, you can have a seat now if you'd like. And I hope you, I hope you got something out of their, their presentation. But there were, you have to remember, we do have some youth I know that probably are not feeling well, or also they already had family vacations planned before we even went, so they were gone. And I actually have three, I asked them, I asked them to write out some things before they left. So there are, there are three uh, girls who went with us on this trip, but actually they're not here this morning, and I'd like to read their, their little statement for you. Um, Avery Grigger, she, she wrote this, I love the church conference, it brought me closer with the Lord, and overall just brought me closer with my friends. I love that we got to choose what sessions we wanted to go to because that they really helped me with how the Lord is with us no matter what we are doing. The mass events at Minute Maid Park was so fun, and I loved all the songs and lessons that they taught. Another girl of our, of our congregation, Katie New, wrote, Something that I really liked about the LCMS Youth Gathering was the mass event. Every day was a new subject that we talked about, and the lessons were really good. The band was also really fun because I liked how everyone was singing along, and overall had a really good time. And then Ryan Meyer wrote, I really liked meeting people from all around the United States, and I really enjoyed everything that the, the gathering has done for this group to be able to go and have the opportunities that they gave to us. The big massive events in the Bay Park every night was just the best. We, we jammed out to live music all night and talked about God with 20,000 people. I really enjoyed Bible study every morning because it just gave me the best time to talk to God and go closer with Him every day. But most importantly, I really loved playing volleyball with my friends because we would get coolness and we also get to play with a bunch of other people. So there are the statements from our youth from the youth gathering. Uh, this, is, this was my ninth, it tells me your age, we do it every three years. This was my ninth youth gathering that I went to with you. I have been with large groups, I've been with smaller groups. And for the very first time, for the first time, there were some of my group that actually got on the big screen in the bathroom. So everybody got to see part of my group. And the section that I'm going to show you is 30 seconds long, so just bear with me, okay? 30 second video I'm going to show you again. This was on the last thing you made part as a part of our group. Okay, go ahead, Dan.
I sincerely repent of them. I pray that your boundless mercy and for the sake of holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office and on the day of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead of my command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give thanks, Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of God. For his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him alone does great wonders. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him, who by understanding made the heavens. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who made the great lights, for his steadfast love endures forever. The sun the rule over the day, for his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and stars the rule over the night, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in your deep compassion, you rescue us from whatever may hurt us. Teach us to love you above all things and to love our neighbors as ourselves. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Whether thrones or dominions 
were rulers for authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things fit together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will have life. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus, Jesus said to him, You go and be likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us confess our faith now the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made. Being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. 
And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. And out of precaution, I'm going to have all the kids stay where they're at. Okay? After the children's message is over with, if, you, if any kid would like to come up and get something from the, to- the treasure box, you may do so. But for you all, the children's message is such. Um, if I ask you what I'm holding in my hand, anybody tell me what that is? You all, I heard it, right? I heard it a number of times. It is the Bible, right? It is the Bible. And we call this Bible what? Of course, this is, this is the gathering Bible. This is the youth gathering Bible that all the kids, all 20,000 participants got this Bible, okay? Um, and we would call this, as a Christian, we would call this not only the Bible, but we would call this God's Word, right? And we would also would call this God's story, right? So what would happen if I would hear a great story of my own that someone told me? I thought, you know what? What if I would take my pen out and write that story in? I like that story. I'm going to add to God's word here. Now, if I add it to God's word, is this God's word still? Well, it is God's word, but what I added is not God's word, is it? It's my word. It's my story, right? What about the exact opposite? What if I was reading in here and I didn't like what I saw? I didn't like what I read. Could I take my red pen out and mark it out, put a big old X through it? Okay, I X that out. Now, is this God's story still? Yes and no, right? What I X'd out, I shouldn't have X'd out, should I? Because it's still God's word. That's something we shouldn't do. But sometimes, you know, we read God's word and it sometimes doesn't click with us. Sometimes we don't like what we hear from God, right? So what happens if we really don't like what we hear from God in his word? And I just take it and I rip that chunk of the Bible out. Right? Now, is it God's word? Notice what, notice what we've done to God's word. We, we've torn it up, haven't we? But you know what? It is still God's story. And God's story tells us exactly what he thinks of us. He thinks so much of us that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come into this world, to die upon a cross, to take away our sins, even the time we treat God's word the way I just did. By the way, that was a, this is a photocopy page. This is not part of the Bible. No Bible, was, no Bible was desecrated or it was written in today, okay? Just to let you know that. The little disclaimer, but that's what God's word is all about. It's his story telling us that he is with us, that he actually is in all things in heaven and on earth. And he, the salvation that we have among us, that we share each and every day of our lives, that even the good and even the bad, he is with us, he takes care of us, and he constantly and always loves us. So I want you to join with me in a word of prayer, okay? Repeat it for me. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus, who forgives us and loves us, always. Amen. And if anybody, any, any child would like to come up and get something out of the t- t- treasure box, you may do so at this time. Otherwise, we've, we continue with the hymn.
peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The base of our meditation this morning comes to us from the epistle, Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 20. We're listening into these words that God speaks to us. He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, you and I, we as people, many times live our lives like waffles. Yes, you heard me right. Waffles. You know what a waffle looks like? You all know what a waffle looks like. I put one up on the screen for you this morning. Whether it be a Belgian waffle or an Eggo waffle or whether it be an American waffle or whatever kind of waffle you may have, they all have indentions. They all have categories or little, little squares that are indented. And when you pour syrup on that waffle, notice what happens. The syrup goes inside those indentions, in those categories, you might say. Yes, we many times live our lives like waffles. What I'm saying is this. Our life at work is one compartment. Our life with hobbies is another compartment. Another life that we have with a club here or there is another compartment. Another society that we may belong to is another compartment. Our friends is another compartment. And our church, well, that's another completely separate compartment. Yes, you and I many times compartmentalize our lives and we live our life like a waffle. Think about it. Many times we say things in one group, in one compartment, that we may not say in another compartment. The way we act in church may not be the way we act at work or with our friends. You and I many times live our lives compartmentalized and we live it like waffles. So is the world we live in, is it that way? Is everything compartmentalized? Is that how God created us as humans and the world we live in? So often we forget that God did create us. He created all things and we forget that he created us in his image. We forget that he created us a wonderful creation. As the psalmist says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. As a matter of fact, we even compartmentalize God himself. Think about it. When we confess the Apostles' Creed and we think about, when we study the Apostles' Creed, we think about God the Father as the Creator. We think about God the Son, Jesus, as the Redeemer. And we think about Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, as the sanctifier and the sanctifier alone. We compartmentalize God's persons into compartments. But if we read Scripture, and if we especially read this passage that we have from Colossians, it's a completely different picture. God is not compartmentalized, and neither are we. Jesus is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. My brothers and sisters in Christ, God the Father we many times attribute to the work of creation, but Jesus also is the creator. And so also is the Holy Spirit. And our, our scripture tells us this morning that Jesus created all things. Created all things. 
but yet we still want to live our lives compartmentalized in different sections. And one should never cross over the other anyway. That's what we think. And because we do this, we have problems with our relationships as well. Instead, we think only of ourselves and the compartment that we live in at the present time. Think about this for a second. The friends or acquaintances that you've had in the last two, three, four, five years, maybe pictures on your phone, maybe somebody that you've been in contact with years ago. Do you still speak with them on a regular basis today? Most of us would say, probably not. And the reason? We typically they have a relationship with somebody because we want something out of that relationship. It's something we need or something we want. We want to get out of the relationship because that's why we're in that relationship. Instead of having the right relationship with those around us. And because we do this, compartmentalize even our relationships, we thrust God aside. And we separate ourselves from our Creator. Even though He is the one who created all things, including us and those whom we come in contact each and every day. Yet listen to what St. Paul says as he continues in chapter 1. And you who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach, before him. What Paul is telling us is not only that God creates all things and Jesus creates all things, but Jesus reconciles all things. He reconciles our relationship with God, which we many times compartmentalize. He reconciles that with the death of his body upon the cross, for he takes upon himself our sins, our broken relationships, the times we want to compartmentalize our lives, he takes to the cross and dies for you and for me, and in his suffering and his death, he grants us his forgiveness, and he brings us back into a right relationship with him. But Jesus doesn't just reconcile us to God only, Jesus also reconciles us with one another. How we relate to each other, God reconciles us in his son, Jesus Christ, that in his death and resurrection, God grants us forgiveness and also the ability to forgive those who sin against us. And the same thing goes for us when we sin against those around us as well. Jesus reconciles all things. He grants us his life, he grants us his salvation, and he makes our relationships new again, reconciling us. And since through Jesus we have been reconciled in all things, Jesus then is the king of all things. He reigns, he rules over all things. Over the world, over us, over our church, over all. Now it's easy for us to say that Jesus rules over all things when things are going easy and nice in our life. When we can have no conflicts whatsoever, which is somewhat rare, but it does happen when we have an easy stretch in our life. We think Jesus is over us and over all things. But when things go bad because of sin, because of broken relationships, because of this or that, of sickness or whatever it may have, we many times forget and have a hard time dealing with the fact that Jesus still reigns over all things. And that's just it. When times get difficult for us, when we have a surmountable Heal the client in whatever way situation they in. It's more comforting to know that Jesus is still in all good things and in all bad things. He reigns and rules over us. And regardless of what may take place in our lives, we know one thing is for certain. That God gives us his forgiveness and everlasting life in his name. So as we live our lives, look at our lives in compartments like a waffle. Look at our lives be like a pancake. When God's love pours over in all things, not just in compartments, but in and throughout our entire life. Because Jesus, he creates all things, he reconciles all things, and he also reigns 
over all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ may be ruler over all, preeminent. Please rise. Merciful Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ in whom all things hold together. See how our sin and sin's effects our world have broken and twisted your good creation. Spare us, Lord, from diseases and pandemics, from storm and flood, from war and bloodshed, abuse and isolation and every sorrow. Turn us in compassion toward those who suffer. In all things, turn us away from ourselves and toward Christ, the firstborn from the dead, in whom we have hope both now and in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, we thank you that you have gathered us from all nations, peoples, tribes, and languages into one body, the church, under Christ our head. See how our world is fractured and divided, how deep hatreds and raging minds run wild, and how love has grown cold. Reconcile us to one another in Christ Jesus, and grant the peace that this world cannot give, since you have reconciled all things to yourself by the blood of Jesus' cross. Lord, your mercy. Holy Father, we praise you that you bring over all things in the world and through the church. Thank you for the great gifts you give us in our families, in our churches, and in our communities. See how many of those lives of sacrificial love. The gospel Bring forgiveness of sins to Jesus, genuine friendship and good and honest work, and all things to open our eyes to love and take our place in the marvelous, ordinary vocations of life. You have established in hope, church, and public life. Lord, your mercy. We pray for those suffering from cancer. Brenda, Carolyn, Lisa, Stephanie, Kathleen, Patsy, Robert, Kelly, Dylan, and Lindley Joe. Also for Darlene, Lori. Bridget, Shirley, Trish, Bennett, Daniel, Sherry, Kenneth, and Matt. We pray also for Debbie, Alan, Doyle, Elrose, Eva, Mac, Kim, David, Sylvia, Cindy, Nell, and Kent. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our shut-ins. Dorothy, Shirley, Joyce, George, and Carrie. Keep them in your care and always have your compassion be upon them. 
Lord, your mercy. Bless the Dixon family and pass away of Joanne's daughter in law, Nicole. We also pray for the Bacon family and pass away of Krista. We also pray for the Kishnik family and pass away of Brad's grandfather. Keep them all in your grace and mercy. Provide them with your compassion and love through your son Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, your mercy. We pray for those recovering from surgery, Bradley, Sabrina, and Lisa. The Lord as she recovers from COVID. Also those with health issues. David, Greg, Barbara, Cynthia, Chris, Dale, and Megan. We also pray for those recovering from a stroke, Jerry and Jennifer. Bless also with your presence, Hilda, Geraldine, Kate, Ruby, Ophelia, Cornell, Ember, Bob, Ashley, Vaughn, David Lee, Justin, and Kimbra. We ask for your strength and protection to be with serving on the border. We also ask for blessing you with those dealing with MS, Paulette and Sarah. Lord, your mercy, graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.